everybody. It is Friday, November the 26th. I am Deborah. I am coming to you from here on my family farm in the foothills of the Arkansas Ozarks, which was land previously home to the Caddo and Osage people and possibly the Quapaw people. There is a little um, d uh, dis difficulty understanding if that was true or not in this part of the Ozarks. Uh, my pronouns are she, her. And I am going to do a sewing summary video for you today because it has been requested and, you know, I have a small viewership, but very loyal viewership. So we're going to do this summary video. Plus, it was nice for me to get everything out and see what I have made. So what we're going to do with Fizzy's help is I'm going to go through uh, and tell you what patterns they are show you if I made multiples of them, how they look in different fabrics, kind of give you my impression of the pattern. And um, yeah, I am firmly a plus sized sewist. I am, my measurements are, and I'm gonna be honest, 49, 36, 41. I've got no butt at all, I guess, <laughs> basically. Um, I am also very broad shouldered. I have very muscular arms and legs. I am tall but short-waisted, and so being able to sew for myself has been a godsend over the course of my life, but I had given it up uh, for a lot of reasons, which I go into in a previous video, but I decided this year the pandemic kind of changed my outlook on things, and I decided to stop hiding my light, so to speak, and I have uh, fully embraced who I am and decided to shine my light out in the world so that others can see it and maybe be hopeful as well like my t-shirt says here you know so if you've been with me for any length of time you know how i am <laughs> but anyway so what i thought i would do is go through what i have made and talk if i can remember where the fabric came from i will tell you um otherwise i'll just say it's deep stash or pass oops Busy fell off the dresser. Deep stash or pass along fabric, and I'll kind of give you a review of the patterns. I'm in my bedroom. The dogs are going to be making noise, and so are the cats, so you'll just have to bear with me. But yes, this is what I have made since March of 2021. March 14th was the day I posted my first make, which is a pair of leggings. So let's get started and have some fun. Okay, so we're going to start with the t-shirts and work our way up to the dresses, right? Because those are the ones that I have the most work in. Um, I'm going to, I went through and I wrote down the pattern company for everything. Um, if I remember the approximate cost, I'll tell you. If I remember where I got the fabric, that I will tell you. Uh, any changes that I made, I will tell you. I'm just going to warn you, I'm not super fussy on my finishing, like on the insides, unless I'm putting it in the fair. If I'm sending it to the fair, then I'll do a really nice finish on my seams on the inside. Otherwise, I usually just use my pink and shears. I haven't drugged my serger out and put it into service yet. Don't worry. Um, but eventually I will. That might be a project for Christmas break because eventually I'm going to clean that sewing room out. Eventually. Okay. So, um, I'm going to start with the two that are not like the others. We're going to have lots of animal cameos, I think, today. This is the Luna Tank from Helen's Closet. This is a free pattern that you can get from Helen's Closet. Very easy. I did a terrible job on this one. I need to make it again. I learned a lot from making this. Mostly, I learned that I hate crawly knit. This stuff crawls like crazy. This is a t-shirt weight. Uh, knit. This was just some leftover that I had and I wanted to test the pattern out. Um, but this is a t-shirt weight knit from fabric.com. So that's from Helen's Closet. That's the Luna Tank. This is the Hemlock Tee from Grain Line Studios. It's a drop shoulder boxy weight, boxy style t-shirt. This is also a free pattern if you subscribe to their newsletter. So this was very easy and quick to make. Again, this was some leftover black t-shirt weight fabric from fabric.com. I really like the fit of this. I like the fit of the Luna tank also. It's a little bit more feminine. Uh, I just need to make it again. So I like, these are both yes. In fact, most all the patterns you're going to see are yeses. Okay. Um, next is the same t-shirt made in different ways. So this will show you how different fabric makes things look different. And Cammie just jostled the um, camera. This is all the Concord Tee from Cashmerette. 
made in different fabrics and made with different necklines and different sleeve lengths. That pattern has three different lengths, it has three different sleeve lengths, and it has three different necklines on it. So you get a lot of bang for your buck um, out of that pattern. It is very size inclusive. It's very easy to follow and they have some unique uh, hemline finishes on it. Uh, so this is all the same pattern made in different weights of fabric and in different uh, styles. Can you get out? Quit shaking. Animals, what can you do? Okay, so I'm going to start with this one. This is, again, some t-shirt weight fabric from fabric.com. This is the um, sort of the scoop neck neckline. This is made in the three-quarter length sleeves, and this is the medium length one. I like things that are at least medium length. I like cropped sweaters, but I'm not a fan of cropped t-shirts and things like that. I don't think they look very flattering on me, but I think a cropped sweater over a t-shirt looks really good. So this is a um, this is a good versatile piece that I've worn a couple of times. And a funny story, I had a student ask me the other day. They said, and it was one of my male students because I was a little bit surprised. Of course, you know I should not stereotype genders. He said, "Have you worn the same thing twice this semester?" And I'm like, "No." <laughs> this is the same T-shirt, but this is a much heavier weight knit. This one is in the short sleeve, but I made it much longer. This is a tunic length, again with a scoop neckline on this one. But this is a much heavier weight knit. This was some pass along fabric that someone gave me um, and I wanted to uh, use it up. Okay, these two are both the same gray fabric uh, from fabric.com, the same as the Luna Tank is made out of. This is the V-neck version, the low neckline version of the, the shirt with the long sleeve option. And then I made, this is the long length also. So this is from fabric.com as well. Then this is that same fabric in a short sleeved version with the high neckline and the long length. Then probably my favorite one and the one that has gotten the most wear, because I wear it with jeans a lot, is this is some leftover fabric from a pair of leggings. This is the same uh, short, this is the mid length with the short sleeves the scoop neckline, and this is Constellation Fabric from Fabric.com that I made a pair of leggings out of. So those are my t-shirts. So the total on those is one tank and six t-shirts. Okay, next we're gonna move on to leggings, PJ pants, and bike shorts. I wear a lot of leggings. I wear leggings under most of my dresses. I wear leggings under most all of my skirts. I just feel more comfortable with them on, especially if I have to you know, I drop something in front of the class and I have to bend over and pick it up. I don't like shining my honey. So um, I, I wear a lot of leggings. I have several pairs that I've bought from a retailer that I really like, which is Sweet Legs, uh, because they're size inclusive. I've also bought several um, uh, resale or um, whatever you want to call it from like a resale shop or whatever. Uh, I like the longer length ones that are because I'm tall. My legs are very long. I have a 36 inch um well about a 34 inch inseam so i wear tall stuff and i like them to come all the way down to my you know to the top of my foot so um being able to make my own is really good um so i'm going to show you my leggings patterns they are all the same pattern they are all the belmont legging by cashmere again a super size inclusive pattern so I have made them in a variety of different fabrics here. So um, traditionally, what you might think of as leggings is made in the more uh, spandex type four-way, or well, this is a two more of a two-way stretch. Um, these are, I've got two pairs like this that I have made. This was ordered from, um, also from fabric.com. I've got a navy blue pair and a gray or purple pair. I did make a mistake on these when I first made them. I uh, cut the waistband along the direction that did not have as much stretch. And so uh, they didn't fit well. So I actually just yesterday cut the waistband off of them and I had plenty of this fabric left over. Uh, for my size, it only takes about a yard and a quarter to make a pair because remember knit is wider generally. Um, and I put a new waistband on. Now this is some pass along fabric for my friend Chris. <laughs> this is fabric of something else. <laughs> shiny, shiny, shiny. But anyway, you know, you can wear it under a skirt or um, something. So I thought, well, might as well. There wasn't very much of it. There was exactly enough to cut this pair of leggings out of. 
My first pair and then back my first make I posted this year was this pair of leggings made with this galaxy print fabric. This is also from fabric.com. This was my first one, so I was very proud of that. This is a double brushed spandex, so it's very soft, and I really like the fit of these. Uh, this is also one of the first things that I made. This is the fabric if you saw on the t-shirt earlier. This is more of a softer cotton jersey stretch fabric. Um, and it's got constellations on it. I don't know if you can see that. Like that. Then I've uh, had some fabric left over from making a dress. My friend Penny gifted me a gift card for this fabric. So this is also a lightweight double brushed um, knit and I haven't worn these yet, but I've got them made to wear under something, and they're very soft. Now, these two, I bought this heavier weight knit for winter. Um, I've already worn one pair of these. This is um, just some heavier weight double knit uh, fabric that I've worn under. It's be more like for wintertime uh, wear. And then this other one I haven't worn yet, and they're also very heavy. Um, this is, and that's, that is from fabric.com as well. Oh, I forgot to mention, this fabric is from uh, Joanne Fabrics and Crafts. Penny was kind enough to give me a gift card to there, and uh, I got a, enough fabric to make myself a dress and make myself a pair of leggings. And then this, this fabric is also from fabric.com, and this is a double knit uh, with a kind of a, a stretch, stripey thing in it. Haven't worn these yet, but I thought they'd be cute under a, long, a dress or a skirt or something. They're more like a pair of pants. Honestly, they're heavy enough that they're more like a pair of pants. So those are all... You two stop. Those are all the Belmont leggings from Cashmerette. Again, very size inclusive uh, pattern. Very easy directions to follow. The bike shorts are leftover fabrics from two dresses that I made. These are from Lika, Lika L-E-K-A -E patterns on um, Etsy. I just Googled, looked for bike shorts on Etsy. Uh, these are to wear in the summertime under shorter skirts. So this is just some fabric left over from a dress that I'll show you in a little bit. And this is the same pattern in a different leftover fabric. These don't, this takes less than a, about a yard of fabric to make these. So if you've got some leftover fabric that you want to figure out what to do and you like to wear stuff under your dresses and skirts, Bike shorts are great for that. Now, the uh, pajama pants are a new look pattern. Let's see, where did I write it down? Um, oh, new look 6404. It's a unisex pattern with a couple of different tops and a couple of different types of pajama pants on them. These are all the same pattern. <laughs> um, a lot of these are leftover fabrics. Some of these are fabrics I bought specifically to make uh, pajama pants. Now these I made actually earlier than March of this year. This is some leftover fleece from making the neck gaiters for the Rainbow Riders for last year for their Christmas gift. So I just made myself a nice pair of cozy fleece house pants. The thing I like about this pattern is it does come with pockets. Uh, it is not a super size inclusive pattern, but because it is a men's pattern also, it, is a little, it does get a little bit larger. I actually make the men's extra large because I like my pants to be roomy. I don't like them to be snug. So that's, that's in a fleece. This is from, um, this was from fabric.com. I also made it in two pairs of cotton. Um, one pair is in the laundry. <laughs> This I got at Marshall Dry Goods. I bought both the cotton ones that I got at Marshall Dry Goods. The other pair has little witches on it. Um, but this is, and you saw it hit featured in um, Vlogmas or Vlogoween. Um, this is just a cotton, a quilter's cotton with farm animals on it. Um, again, the same pattern, but this is from Marshall Dry Goods. You have to buy by the bolt there. Remember, I went there on my birthday a couple years ago. Uh, this is flannel. I have another flannel pair also in the wash with unicorns on them. This is flannel from Joanne Fabrics and Crafts. And these have these were actually made before March of this year too. So they were made, they were worn a lot last winter. So, but I like them. They're long, they're roomy, they've got elastic waistband, and they've got pockets, which matters a lot to me. These are three pair that I just made after I got finished doing all this sewing behind me. Uh, these are scrappy ones. 
So um, these are all fabrics that I had left over from some of the makes behind me. So um, this, these are owls. I do not have any idea where this came from because this moved with me from Oklahoma. So this is some deep stash fabric. And so is this. This is also, I think this actually might have been my mother's fabric. Uh, it's got bears in the woods. Okay. Um, yeah. So there's that. Then uh, I had, again, this is, I don't know where this came from. This is deep stash. I don't know. Uh, again, this is also deep stash. Um, you, um, winter time reindeers. And then I didn't have quite enough, so I used some scraps and made the legs longer back here uh, with this also deep stash fabric. They're pajama pants. Who cares, right? So yeah, so there's there's pajama pants. So I have made a total, since I started all of this, of eight pairs of pajama pants. So uh, that's six pair, wait, eight pairs of leggings, two pairs of bike shorts, and eight pairs of pajama okay. pants. So the next thing I'm going to show you is sort of my one-off or oddball uh, ones. I have made two pairs of pants. Um, this pair is a pair of capri pants. It's a McCall's pattern, but I don't remember the number because I lost the pattern somehow or another. Uh, but at least I knew how to finish the pants. So this is fabric that I got in 2018 at a big box retailer that I will not shop at anymore because I don't agree with their worldview. <laughs> uh, but I do have enough of this left over to make a skirt. So, um, yeah, that's before I got smarter about my, my voting with my dollars, right? Um, this pair of pants is a linen-like pass-along fabric from my friend Chris. I just went out to Claremore um, and picked up a whole lot of fabric. I jokingly put on Facebook that I needed a GoFundMe to fund my fabric habit, and my friend Chris, who lives in Claremore, Oklahoma, which is about three and a half hours away, I've known her for many, many, many years, she said, girl, if you will come out here, I will hook you up. So I spent, between gas, food, and tolls to get out there, I spent about $50, well, minus me probably being a fugitive from the Oklahoma Turnpike Authority. I had all my dollars to pay the, the tolls, right? Got your dollar bills or whatever. There's one toll booth on the Creek Turnpike. It's coins only, and there's nobody there. And it's $1.15, and I had not a single coin to my name. So I just went through the gate, and so did the people behind me, <laughs> and so did the people behind them. So I guess I'll either get a visit from the Oklahoma Highway Patrol or Turnpike Authority, or I'll get a bill. One of the two. <laughs> anyway, um, we also went to the thrift store out there while we were there, but this is some linen-like fabric. This is the Just Feel Pretty pant. It's a wide leg elastic waist pant. This is a pattern from Ellie and Mac. Ellie and Mac is one of my favorite pattern companies. Uh, along with cashmerette. You'll see them a lot in my clothes. Um, very size inclusive, very direct and easy to follow, and they have really good sales. So this is the Just Feel Pretty pant. This is kind of a linen type fabric. It's not really probably a linen. And it's also kind of see-through, um, but as long as the light's in front of you, you're okay. But I think if the light got behind you, you might show some things you didn't want to show necessarily. Okay. Nice pockets. I added the pockets. This pant did not call for pockets, but I went ahead and put pockets in it. The other thing that I'll show in this little section, since it's a one-off thing, is uh, this vest is the Mama Darcy vest by Made for Mermaids off of Etsy. This is made in a cotton voile from Mood Fabrics. Okay, I made a long sort of duster length vest to wear with jeans and high heel boots. Like I've got these nice boots and I wear, uh, I've worn a tank top under this. I've worn the Luna tank under it. I've also uh, worn it once with a t-shirt under it. So it's a nice versatile vest. Now this pattern does call for knit. This is not a knit fabric. So what I did is I had some pass along fabric that I knew I was never going to use for anything. So I mocked the pattern up to see what changes I need to make and basically I just needed to cut it a little wider in areas and add a little bit more ease so it would give me the room that a uh, knit would give me for stretch so yeah and um, I finished the seams on this one with bias tape 
So something like this where you're going to maybe see the seams a little bit more because of the way it flows. I went ahead and did a nice finish on my seams so that it would look nicer. This is a nice versatile layering piece. You could wear it over a dress. You could wear it over a t-shirt and jeans. I really like it. So this is the Mama Darcy vest by Made for Mermaids off of Etsy. Okay, so we'll move on to the next thing. Oh, I forgot to mention my tally is two pairs of pants and one vest. So now we're going to move on to skirts. Again, I've got a couple of patterns that I've made several times, but one that I've only made uh, once, and this is, let me find it on here. Yeah, it is the uh, Circle Skirt by Megan Nielsen Patterns. This is made in some pass-along fabric. Uh, I need to make me a little um, crinoline to wear underneath this, and I have my friend Chris gave me some perfect fabric for that. Uh, this is a free pattern from Megan Nielsen Patterns. Um, you can find them on Instagram and then search for their website. It has pockets on the front, like a, a patch pocket type thing. It's not an inset pocket. It has a zipper in the side. And this is a super cute sort of rockabilly style skirt. This fabric is some pass along fabric that one of my neighbors gave me. They left me several trash bags of fabric. And I forgot to mention my friend Chris, I ended up with eight trash bags of fabric, big black trash bags of fabric. Plus, two black trash bags of stuffing and batting. So yay, it was definitely worth the trip out there. <laughs> uh, you're just gonna see just a scratching the surface of the fabric that I got from them. But I really love this piece. Um, I'm gonna make a little, uh, a little um, petticoat type crinoline to wear underneath it so it'll stand out a little bit because this is just a cotton so it doesn't have a lot of body. And I want it to have a little bit more body plus some of these patterns that I wanna make coming up will benefit from that as well. And she And Chris gave me a lot of like lace that panel lace that i think i can figure out how to make a couple of different um petticoats so this is the make this is the a circle skirt the circle skirt pattern by megan nielsen patterns okay um the next one is let's see this is the maxi skirt the knit maxi skirt by hourglass patterns and i've made it four times okay so um, basically, none of this fabric was purpose bought with the idea of making a skirt, but I had enough left over of all these fabrics that I thought I wanna use it up, especially with like knits. I like to just use them up and get them out of my stash. Um, they're not something I necessarily wanna keep unless I wanna make like yarn um, cozies or whatever. So these, I've got four of them here and I'll take them off and show you really quick. So this is from the leftovers from those leggings. This is fabric from fabric.com. This is just a simple A-line skirt. It doesn't take very much fabric. It takes less than an hour to make because it's just a front and a back and a waistband. And the waistband application is kind of, you do it all at once. You don't make a waistband tube and then put in the elastic. You just kind of do it all at once. And I actually use some wide elastic that I had. So this is a super comfortable fit, okay? Then this is some leftover fabric. Actually, this is some fabric that I bought that I wasn't sure what I was gonna do with, so I made a skirt and a top. You'll see the top in a little bit. Uh, this is some um, knit from mood.com. So this is more like a um, polyester knit from mood.com. I love that color. And again, I used a wider elastic in the waistband for this one. Um, this is, these are both leftovers from another project. So you've seen this pink already. So I had some enough leftover because I, I bought, when you buy from fabric.com and you get, if you end up getting the end of the bolt, they send you what you have plus whatever's left. So I had a little bit extra of this fabric. So I had enough to make a skirt. And then this is also, uh, this is fabric from joanne.com um, or Joanne Fabrics and Crafts rather. Um, and this is left over from a dress that I made. So for those skirts. Then the other skirt pattern that I've made multiple times is the chocolate chip skirt by Tie Dye Diva off of Etsy. I've made it one, two, three, made it five times. Okay, I've made it five times here, so I'll show you all these. This is fabric from the thrift store. I found this fabric in uh, my local thrift store, the, the, the uh, upholstery looking fabric. 
And then this is, I don't know where I got this polka dot fabric. This is a lined skirt. You don't have to make it lined, but the pattern, you can make it lined, you can make it unlined, or you can make it reversible. Uh, it has pockets here. Said, and I like the way this fits. This is a nice little versatile skirt. You can make it longer, you can make it shorter. It's got a half elasticized waistband, so this is sort of my go-to skirt pattern. This fabric is from, uh, I bought it off from a vendor at Etsy, but it's an Alexander Henry fabric. I love some octopus. This is Octavia, I think is the name of this fabric. Um, this is also the same lined skirt. This was the first one I made actually. So this is a lined um, skirt. It's got the, again, the half elastic waistband and the set in sleeves. Um, I ordered some elastic from Amazon. It's not as tough and strong as the elastic you buy like from the fabric store. So I actually had to cut these a little bit shorter. So I had to take this, op open this up and cut the elastic a little bit shorter. This fabric is from fabric.com, but this is the Mr. Domestic Pride Month fabric. This is one called Silhouettes, and you'll notice the butterflies have little people for their bodies. This is one of their Pride Month fabrics. Um, so again, this is the same version with the pockets lined at uh, half elasticized waist. I cut this one just a little bit longer because I wanted to use up as much of this fabric as possible. This one is some fabric that I bought, I believe I got this from Joann's a long time ago and I didn't know what I was, I was gonna make a top out of it and I actually already had the top pinned and cut out and I thought I'm never gonna wear that type of top. So I ended up cutting it back, taking it off and recutting it and making this skirt out of it and um, got a fun little lining for the pocket there because I didn't have quite enough fabric to make the pocket lining um, but it's the women doing science skirt the last one is some uh, fabric that is deep deep stash fabric I don't really know where it came from I think it might have come from cloth world if y'all remember cloth world which was the predecessor to Joann's when I lived in Oklahoma I just thought this was really beautiful fabric and um, this is a nice, pretty gold uh, paisley print. So, okay, the last skirt I'm going to show you has no pattern. It was a dress that I cut out before I left Oklahoma. I wouldn't, wasn't going to be able to fit it. It was too small in the bust, but it fit in the waist. So I cut the top off of it, put some elastic in it, and made myself a skirt. I had it cut out, I sewed it up, I put it in the fair as an entry, and then I'm like, I'm never going to be able to wear that, so I could either give it away, or I could, make, I could cut the top off of it and make a skirt, so I did. It was already hemmed, all I had to do was make a casing, so, and that fabric was too good to pass up, so this is a reclaimed um, old dress. So, there you go. So, the A-line skirt from Hourglass Patterns Maxi Skirt or the Chocolate Chip Skirt from Tie-Dye Diva are the two that I've made. And for those of us keeping track, I have made 11. Oh, and the Megan Nielsen Circle Skirt, which was free. I have made 11 skirts this year. Next, we're going to talk about tops instead of t-shirts. These I would call these blouses or tops. These are the tops that I've made, so I'll go through all of those. Um... If you're keeping track, there's two, four, six, seven tops that I have made this year. Is that right? Yes, seven tops. So I'll go through each one of those. So um, the first two are both the same pattern. These are both the Schoolhouse Tunic by So Liberated. This is one of their older patterns. Um, it didn't have as much of a size range on it, but I don't know if it's one of the ones they've reworked recently. Uh, it is just a slip over tunic with an open top here. Uh, you can make it longer or shorter. It's got an interesting little pleat detail in the back. Uh, it's got a nice three quarter length, or this is kind of an elbow sleeve, elbow length sleeve on this one. This was the first one I made. This is some fabric that I bought in 2018 from that same big box retailer that I won't shop at anymore, but I wanted to go ahead and use the fabric. It's just a cotton fabric. Uh, this one is an Alexander Henry fabric called Stronger Together, and sometimes I like to wear what I believe on my sleeve, literally. So this one is the same thing, except I lengthened the bodice a little bit, so it was a little less of a peplum -y fit on me. 
I lengthen the bodice. I also made it a little bit longer and I lengthen the sleeves a little bit on this one. This is, again is a cotton fabric. It's called Stronger Together by um, Alexander Henry. And I got this off of a retailer on Etsy. Okay, the next two are also the same pattern. These are both the Matcha Top by So Liberated. Just drop that one. The Matcha Top by So Liberated. It's another um, sort of open top that you would wear over like a tank or a t-shirt or something like that. This is the first one that I made. This is out of a cotton wall from Mood Fabrics, which is beautiful. I love this fabric. Uh, it's a very simple sort of boxy um, fit here. Uh, it's, it's a short, it's like a crop length if you want it to be that short. It's a crop length and it's very versatile. Like I said, it's over, it can go over a dress, it can go over a t-shirt, it can go over a tank top. This is the same pattern where I lengthened the bodice just a little bit. Um, and I, oh, I dropped the waistline a little bit and I also lengthened it. This is in some Alexander Henry fabric that was a gift. Or no, this is Michael Miller, excuse me. This is Michael Miller fabric that's cotton that was a gift for my friend Diana LaFerry out in California. She's a graphic designer and she's also done some fabric designing um, in the past. So this is not one of her fabrics, but um, she thought she, that I would enjoy it. It's a nice Art Deco-y print here. So great with jeans and a tank top, boots or sneakers. I'd like to wear a lot of Converse. Um, so great versatile piece. Okay, these last ones are all sort of test runs on a pattern, so they don't look exactly how I want them to look, but they will do for now. Um, this is the wrap top from So So Easy. This is a free pattern uh, from So So Easy. I made the largest size and actually enlarged it just a little bit to fit my bust. Uh, it is a simple sew. So it is a free pattern. Um, when I make this again, I'm going to make a few changes to it, but I, overall I'm pleased with the fit. Uh, I did struggle a little bit with the hemline and cutting it out. Um, but this is again, some pass along knit fabric that's from that same uh, neighbor down the road that gave me the bag of fabric. This is a wearable muslin of some old sportswear fabric that I had. This is the Chris top from stocks patterns. Um, and this is my test run on this. I don't, I did not figure out how to make that special collar. So I'm going to cut this collar off at some point and just put a regular neckband. And she gives you both options on the pattern, but this is a beautiful fit because it's cut on the bias. So it has a beautiful drape to it and it fits really well. And it's got this hollow hem here. It's a really super comfortable and fits great. I just didn't do a very good job on this collar. So I'm going to cut that off and put the regular neck bound. So this is the Chris K-R-I-S top from Stocks Patterns. Then this is the Rivermont top. There's a dress too. This is from Cashmere. This is a peplum top. Um, and I made this to kind of test out to see if I liked peplum tops. I don't really care for how they look on me, but I mean, it's a cute top and I'll wear it, but I'm not really a fan of the style on me, but I know they're super cute. Uh, this is some fabric from Mood. This is some knit fabric from Mood.com. This pattern is really well fitted. It has very size inclusive. Uh, you get a dress or a top pattern in this, and you'll see the dress again in just a little bit. So this is the Rivermont from Cashmere, and this is in that knit from Mood.com. Okay, so there's my seven tops. Okay, now for the big finish, the dresses. I have made since um, March of this year, 21 dresses or, and well, 21 dresses and four pinafores. So we're gonna put them all together. So here they are back here, hanging on the door. Um, so I will group them by uh, pattern type. And again, tell you kind of what I made. The first one I'm gonna start with is this one. I have no idea what pattern this is. This is a dress I found in my fabric stash that it, all it needed to be was the uh, the arms, well, where the shoulder seams sewed up on the inside and then it needed to be hemmed. This is a flannel. Don't have a clue what pattern this is. I brought it with me from Oklahoma. <laughs> it still fits. So it has pockets. 
So it's gonna go into my winter rotation. So sorry, don't know. <laughs> All right, the next one, the next one is a Ellie and Mac pattern. Gotta hang that back up there so y'all don't see my messy hallway. This is the Be Captivating Dress by Ellie and Mac. This is a nice fitted crossbody wrap dress. Um, I don't think it had pockets in it, so I added pockets, I add pockets to everything. This is some pass along fabric from my friend Deanna, and I love it because it looks like some 1970s rock and roll poster fabric, right? Uh, it, the top is lined on this, so it's really nice that way. It has a nice fit because of that. Uh, this pattern also has a top option. So this is the Be Captivating Dress by Ellie and Mac. And that's knit. This is a stretchy knit. Okay, these next, where's the other one? This. Okay, they, these two are the same pattern. This is a summer dress. This is the, let me find it. This is the Sophia. It comes in a top, a tunic, or a dress by Bella Sunshine Designs. I made the dress version and I actually lengthened it a little bit because it kind of hits mid calf. Um, so I lengthened it a little bit. This is a racer back sundress or a tank top or tunic. Um, this is spandex fabric from joanne.com with the Zodiac on it. And then this is a cotton jersey from Spoonflower. So this was my test for this. If you guys know, Spoonflower is not cheap. Good quality fabric, but it definitely gets in your pocket a little bit. Uh, this pattern does not have pockets, so I added pockets. Um, and it fits really super well. Um, and I love it, and I'll probably make it again next summer. So, the, yeah, this is the Sophia by Bella Sunshine Designs on Etsy. Sticking with the theme of summer dresses, this is the Holyoke dress from Cashmerette. This is a long, gorgeous maxi dress, and I made it in this super deep stash border print. So I got to practice matching up my prints. Um, I cheated. It's supposed to have, well, the buttons on this are fake. You just sew them closed if you want to, or you can make a bajillion buttonholes. I did not want to do that. Uh, this is a beautiful, this is woven fabric. So this is deep stash cotton fabric. Um, it's made in panels. It has a beautiful fit. I love this dress. It fits really well. Uh, the only thing is the armholes are a little bit deep for me. So if I made it again, I might cut it a little bit higher here. But they look just, it looks really flattering on. Okay, it's a very flattering fit. Again, this is the Holyoke. It's a very size inclusive pattern. Again, it's from Cashmerette. Excellent instructions on how to make it. And I love that you don't have to sew up the insides of the, um, there's no hand sewing on this, which, you know, if you get some of the patterns from the big, big three pattern companies, they want you to hand sew these straps closed and I'm not about that life. So these were also deep stash buttons. But I love this dress. And I got a lot of compliments when I wore it. I'm not winning. <laughs> All right. I was trying to leave these up here so I could hang them back up. And put, this is Satchel's portrait. Got to hang him back up there. down the floor. All right, this is the I Love the 90s dress by Ellie and Mac. This is in some double brushed spandex from fabric.com. The I Love the 90s has a little arched um, waistband here. It kind of comes up in an arch for front and back. 
It has some different length options to it, and it has a nice lined bodice also. It has some different sleeve length options, has some different length options. It has pockets, which I'm always, y'all know that I love the pockets. So I think, I think I may have added these pockets. I don't think it had pockets. So yeah, this is a nice, cute, uh, sort of baby doll style dress. And I love it. It's one of my favorite ones that I've made. Continuing with Ellie and Mac, this is the Sweetie Pie dress. This is sort of a skater fit dress. Very form-fitting, and I, you know, I used to kind of cover myself up, and now that stuff fits right, I don't feel like I have to. This is the Sweetie Pie, very straightforward um, sew from Ellie and Mac. Uh, this is in fabric from Joanne Fabrics and Crafts. This is some double-brushed cotton spandex from Joanne Fabrics and Crafts. And uh, this is another one of my favorite dresses that I've made. It has a nice full swing skirt on it, uh, and it's a super easy dress to make. It's a front and a back and a sleeve, two sleeves. Y'all quit biting down there. Shh, shh, shh. Quit. Wouldn't be my podcast without lots of animals. Okay, these two are the same uh, dress. These are both from Adelica. Adelica, this is model 1658. They have a very size inclusive range, but it's not all in a single pattern. You have to buy a different pattern for different sizes. So hopefully you don't go cross over the size pattern. Um, this is a sort of an empire waisted dress with a button bodice on it and then a, a closed up skirt. I put patch pockets on the outside of it. It did not call for pockets, but I wanted pockets and I love the fit of these. Okay, these are both flannel from Joanne Fabrics and it was on sale so these dresses cost me $11 a piece to make because these buttons if you see here the dark buttons on this one and then the little sunburst buttons on this one those were already in my stash from who knows when so deep stash couple of these Adelica again this is Adelica and this is model where do you go oh 1658. Find them on Etsy. They do have a very wide range of sizes, but again, they don't all come in one pattern, so you have to buy different patterns. Okay. Um, let's talk pinafores, shall we? These are all the same pattern. These are the Ivy Pinafore by Jennifer Lauren Handmade. Found them on Etsy. Uh, these are all the same on the same pattern. One of them is a fuller fit with a bigger wide swing body. And then the other three are the more narrow fit ones. Um, so we'll go through each one of these. The first one is the same owl fabric you saw in the pajama pants because this is some deep stash fabric. This is lined. This is lined with just some white cotton fabric. It's actually pocket material. My cousins used to work at the Levi plant when the Levi plant was in Morrillton, Arkansas, and they brought me a huge industrial bolt of pocket material about 30 years ago, and I'm still using it for different things. It's great for backing like craft panels and stuff. Um, but this is a big swing full, full pinafore. Um, these are fake buttons. I just sewed it closed there where you can make buttons if you want to. It has pockets. It does come with pockets. So this is a more uh, full swing, sort of circly skirt. I wear these with leggings, like I wear with everything. And then these three are all the same pattern, view of the pattern, but in different fabrics. So this one is, I don't even know what kind of fabric this is. This is sort of a brown brushed something. It's kind of velvety feeling. Don't have any idea. It was deep stash. And then inside, it's lined with kind of a nice little surprise. This is a Michael Miller fabric that I bought to line a, an apron with. And I never made the apron. I'm going to make the apron fabric into a dress. But I thought that'd be a nice little surprise inside there. But I have no idea what kind of fabric this is. It's a brushed poly something or other. I don't know. I don't know what it is. But I like it. It looks kind of like suede-ish. 
So this was the first one I made of these. It has a flat fell detail on it on the front and on the back if you want to do it. I got lazy and didn't do it on the back. I just did it on the front. This is some deep stash flannel lined with deep stash sportswear. So this is a little bit heavier. Well, that one's heavy because that brown fabric is heavy. This one's heavy because these two fabrics together make it heavy. I did not do the flat felled detail on the front here. Uh, I just matched my plaid as best as I could on the front and the back. Uh, it's harder to match on the sides because there's a bust dart. So you have to kind of forego matching up here and then try to do your best as you go down. Uh, but this is very versatile. I really like this pattern a lot. It is not super size inclusive, um, but it does go up to, I believe, a 26. I make a 22 top, usually in a 16 bottom. Uh, but this one is true to size. In fact, most of the patterns that I have found have been fairly true to size, except for a couple that I'm going to show you coming up. This is the same Ivy Pinafore. I just finished this yesterday. This is a wool plaid from, that was passed along from my friend Chris, lined with a linen that was passed along from my friend Chris. And then these are deep stash buttons. So, um, yeah, I just made this one. Again, tried to match up the plaid as best as I could. <laughs> Again, it's kind of hard to do on the sides because of the bust darts. You have to kind of not let it match for a little bit, but I did okay. I'm pretty happy with it. So, yeah. So, that is the Ivy Pinafore by Jennifer Lauren Handmade. Obviously, I'm a fan. Okay. The next one is the same pattern again. Made in different fabrics. This is the Hinterland dress by So Liberated. The Hinterland is, is a pretty size inclusive pattern. It is a very versatile pattern, and I have made it in four different fabrics here, so you can kind of see um, how the different fabrics make it look. So let me hang these pinafores back up real quick here before the cats lay on them. Oops. Anything that gets on the bed is fair game for the cats to lay on. Okay, so, excuse me, Baxter. So these are all the same pattern. Uh, I have made some modifications to fit me a little bit better. I've lengthened the bodice, and I made them a little bit longer. This is um, the hinterland with the full, no, this is not the full front placket. This is with the open bodice, but the closed skirt. This is some um, dinosaur, neon dinosaur fabric. Don't remember where I got it. And since I didn't have quite enough to cut my bias binding from the fabric, I just used black. Uh, bias tape for the, the armholes and the neck because they don't have facings. They don't have a neck facing. You just do a binding. Uh, I did do the waist ties on this one and I made it a little bit longer. It has pockets, which I like, as you know. So this is just some cotton. So this is the hinterland in cotton. Excuse me. Also in cotton, but this is a cotton voile, so this is a much lighter weight uh, garment. This is a cotton voile with a large print from Mood Fabrics. Again, this is the same uh, open bodice, closed skirt. This I wear over like a t-shirt and leggings in the summertime. I used some deep stash buttons, but this voile is from Mood Fabric, and I love that big sunflower print. It does have the waist ties on it also, but it hangs completely differently because it is such a lightweight cotton, but it's a great summer uh, dress. Baxter, come on. This is the full front placket version of the hinterland where the buttons go all the way down. Again, I cheated. These are not real buttons. I just sewed them on because I can slip this over my head. This is flannel. This is a, a flannel from Joanne Fabrics and Crafts. It's got jellyfish on it. <laughs> um, so this is um, more of a winter dress. Again, I have made, I have made the bodice a little bit longer. Um, I didn't lengthen the length on this one at all since I dropped the bodice. I didn't care if it was a little bit longer again with the pockets and the waist ties. But this is the full front placket, so the buttons go all the way down on this one. Then this one I just finished this week. 
This is some pass along wool houndstooth for my friend Chris. Um, the only thing that worries me about this is this stuff is woven and I'm afraid it's going to fray. Um, but we'll deal with that. We'll finish the seams of bias tape if I need to. This is the full front placket again. Uh, again, I dropped the bodice a little bit. I did lengthen it because I wanted to use as much of this fabric as I could. And this is going to be very, very warm. This is a true wool woven hound's tooth. It's got the pockets. I did not do the waist ties on this one. I made it more like just a standard uh, jumper style dress. Uh, yeah, so I haven't worn this one yet. <laughs> I just finished it. Okay, so that's the Hinterland from So Liberated. Uh, the next one is a one-off. This is the Rivermont dress. This is the version of the dress of that peplum top that I showed you earlier. I haven't worn this dress yet. Um, I'm not sure I like it. It fits just fine, but I'm just not sure that I'm a fan of it yet, so I don't know that this dress is going to survive. I may end up taking it apart and making it into something else. Okay, so, because right now I'm just not, I'm just not sold on it. Not any fault of the pattern, I just don't, it's just not the dress for me, I think. But we'll see. It's a cute dress, I mean, I like the dress and it fits really well, but um, I'm just not a fan of it. So, anyway, we'll see. Okay, this is the one pattern that I would caution you runs a little bit small. This is the Aza dress from DG Patterns. They are not super size inclusive. I made the 22, which is what should fit me up top, and it's a little bit, well, it's supposed to be fitted, but it was a little too fitted, in my opinion, and I wanted a little bit more room. Uh, this was my test. This fabric is actually fabric that I made a Roaring Twenties Ladies Day dress out of for my birthday party last year or two years ago. Uh, we had a Roaring Twenties party and um, I didn't have enough fabric to, so I made some gores to put in it to fit on the skirt, but I wanted to reuse this fabric because it's Spoonflower fabric, although I see I've got a problem with my neck band here. I'm going to have to take it apart and fix that. Um, this dress has an unusual construction, and so the second time I made it, I made some modifications to it um, with the construction, because some of the stuff I thought, well, that's cute, but I don't want that. So, um, I mean, I like the dress style. It does fit really well. It's a great summer dress. Um, I just, just be careful if you make it, because it is, it runs, I think, a little bit small. So this was my second time to make it. This is pass along fabric from my neighbor. This, when I made it this time, I dropped the waist a little bit. I made the skirt a little bit longer and I added pockets because it doesn't call for pockets. So, and I changed how this neckline was applied a little bit. Um, they have you make it in two pieces and then it, and it's just very strange. So I didn't like how it looked. There was a seam right up the center of it. So I just cut it all as one solid piece and accommodated for that in the pattern. When I cut it out. I do like this dress fit much, much better. This is the, um, it comes in a pleated skirt version and a, a gathered skirt version. These are both the pleated skirt, or excuse me, both the gathered skirt version that I've showed you here. So these are both cotton. Now the Spoonflower cotton is a lot heavier weight than your standard quilters cotton, which is the nice thing about Spoonflower fabric. You do get good quality fabric. Uh, so it is, a, it does drape a little bit differently than the other dress. Uh, but my, I noticed I've got a problem up here with my neckline. I didn't catch my stitching quite right. So I'm going to have to go out and fix that. But anyway, so yeah, and I've worn both of these. I like them both. Um, so I would make this again now that I know how to fit it. That's the, the key. Okay. Um, okay. The next dress is the hipster dress by Ellie and Mac. And here, here it is in three different fabrics. I've made it three times, obviously. Um, and I'll show you each one. So the first one is in a four-way stretch fabric from mood.com. It has a cowl neck. Okay, or you can put a hood on it. Uh, so you can have a hoodie dress if you want to. Uh, this is a nice four-way stretch. I love this color. I made a high-low split hem on it. And, um, yeah, I mean, I, I didn't think I was going to like this dress at first. And then I wore it with, um, 
leggings and um, what did I wear? Like a vet, a, a string vest that I had, and I thought it looked super cute with boots. So, so I like it now. Sometimes it's just how you style something it makes you like it more or less. Then this is also fabric from Mood. This is two-way stretch. It's a lot heavier. And this is more of a winter dress. I made the maxi length on this one. That was the knee length. This is the maxi length. Okay. It has cuffs on the sleeves, which I like, like a t-shirt. I made the cowl neck again. Okay. It does have pockets, which, you know, you got to have the pockets. All right. And this is a much heavier fabric. So this is a great warm winter dress. So, yeah. And that's also from Mood. Then the last one is made in the double brushed spandex my friend Penny gave me the gift card for. This is from Joanne Fabrics and Crafts. This is a lighter weight four-way stretch and it's much more drapey. But I made the long length again, cowl neck, um, and I love it. It's very super comfortable to wear, warm, because it is long. It's got long sleeves, so it is very warm. So I love it. So this is the hipster dress by Ellie and Mac. Very size inclusive pattern. I really recommend this one, especially if you're a beginner because it's very simple to sew up there and the directions are very clear. Okay, last but not least, this is Adelica. This is model 1560. Okay, this is a dress from Adelica Patterns. It's a very simple little summer short sleeve, almost like a cap sleeve dress. It's an A-line dress. It didn't have pockets on it, so I made patch pockets. And put on it. This was my test fabric. This is my wearable muslin. This is some pass along fabric again from my neighbor. But I thought it was super cute, so why not wear it, right? It has a button closure at the top at the back. Okay, so yeah, I love I love how this fits. It's a perfect little swingy summer dress. Um, this fabric I think is from my favorite quilt store. It's the this is Dear Stella fabric. It's, I don't remember the name of the fabric line, but it's Dear Stella fabric. And I think it's Stargazer is what it's called. It's got the foxes doing astronomy because I had to, so I had to have that. So this was my second go on this dress. This time I did inset pockets in the sides. Didn't I? Yeah, I can feel them. I did inset pockets, so I just drafted my own pocket and did inset pockets. Made it a little bit longer, dropped the waist a little bit on this one. And then this was the ultimate fabric that I wanted to make it out of. And this was fabric that I had to have, even though it was a little bit expensive. This is Lady McElroy Cobra Corsage fabric. Because who doesn't want a pretty feminine dress with snakes and bugs and beetles and moths on it? <laughs> so this is that same pattern. This time I didn't do the opening in the back with the button closure. I didn't found I didn't need it. Um, I dropped the waist on this again to make it fit my, I'm long from shoulder to waist and then short from waist to hip. So I usually drop it about two inches to fit me up here. So, uh, and then I made it a little bit longer because this fabric was so expensive, I wanted to use up every little bit of it. <laughs> so I did, mission accomplished. So yeah, so this is the last dress that I'm gonna show you and that was makes a total of 21 dresses that I've made this year. Okay, y'all. So, um, thank you for sticking with me through this. Um, I talked in my previous video about kind of why I decided to go on this journey because I would found that I would sort of lost myself in general. Uh, I wasn't being true to who I was. I was kind of hiding who I was uh, just to kind of get along, which I realize that sometimes you have to do that. But also sometimes you need to not do that because it's not, it's not good for your mental health. It's not good for your physical health in some cases. I think part of it is why I, part of why I developed an ulcer this last year was that. Um, and I just kind of lost my sense of who I was. And clearly, you know, I have an unusual <laughs> eclectic sense of style. And um, I also, you know, bought myself, you know, jeans and shoes. And most everything that I've bought, though, has been either resale or thrifted, you know. So all of this, all of these garments, of which I counted up, there were 70 74, 71, 71 garments that I've showed you. Um, plus the jeans and the shoes and everything. I don't, I didn't tally it up exactly, but since I have thrifted and bought things resale um, through different resale uh, sites, 
for the most part. I did buy some of my Converse I paid full price for and some of my Oon shoes I paid full price for. But um, I totally rechanged my wardrobe out completely um, and then some for less than $1,000. And I mean, I realize that that's not accessible to everybody, but you don't have to do all of that. You don't have to buy all the shoes or, um, you know, jeans or whatever. But I just didn't have any. I had let myself get to the point where I had nothing. I had no decent shoes to wear. I had no jeans that fit anymore because I had gained some weight at some point in the past. And luckily I've lost, lost it back. But I also had jeans that I'm never going to be that thin again because the life that I was living to be that thin is not one that's good for me mentally or physically. Um, so, you know, find, finding clothes that fit me and suited who I was as a person and sort of represented who I was as a person has made a huge difference in how I feel about putting myself out in the world, about um, who I am as a person. And people notice that. I mean, people notice that. Um, you know, my students have noticed, but one thing that stuck out to me was the ladies at the co-op. Um, you know, the ladies at the co-op said, you know, we can tell a difference in you. You know, I've managed to get up every day. I get my clothes together the night before. Um, and I feel good. You know, I feel good. I have my makeup ready. I have my jewelry. And I'm doing all that for me. I'm not doing that to try to suit anybody else but me. And um, it makes a difference. And, and you know what? You're showing an example to somebody else. And that's what really makes an impact on me is I've had students stop me and say things, you know, like, thank you for, you know, being you because then that makes me feel brave enough to do that too. Um, you know, and I do have a very quirky sense of style. I have t-shirts that I wear. I have things from Hot Topic that are kind of funky and I've got funky shoes and my, I have all this great jewelry that I've bought, gotten over the years. I love a good thrift store, you know, shirt. Um, so yeah, so I guess what I'm saying is if you want to learn to sew, don't hold yourself back. My mother's piece of advice when I learned to sew was get yourself some inexpensive fabric, get yourself an easy pattern, and if you screw it up, nobody dies. You know, I mean, if you screw it up so bad that you can't salvage it, throw it away. You know, but chances are that you won't. And there is a freedom that comes with being able to sew for myself that I had forgotten about. Uh, and it has made a huge difference in my well-being. So I encourage y'all to do that. Thank y'all for coming on this journey with me. I'm not nearly done. I've got things cut out in there on my cutting table right now. But I just wanted to kind of give you an update of where I'm at. And I hope that you enjoyed this. And again, thank y'all for coming along on this journey with me. And um, I'll see y'all. We're going to do holla vlog is what we're calling it this year. Just cover all the holidays. We're doing holla vlog in December. Um, I'm probably going to do a whip parade of my different whips that I've got going on in cross stitch and in, in fiber crafting. So we'll see y'all soon. And thanks for hanging in y'all. Bye. Peace out y'all. Bye. Willie's not here. I don't know where he's at. <laughs> he's on vacation today. It's, it's vacation day. He's doing Black Friday sales, I guess. What are you doing? Okay. I'll have my people talk to your people. Bye.